In this video, I'm going to show you how I made these melted disco balls. When I first came across these melted disco balls, I was like, oh my God, they're so cool. But then I saw the price tag and was like, okay, I won't be getting them. Then I came across all these things on TikTok of people making them and I was like, I've got, I can do this. I can totally do this. So about a year ago, I made some and I showed them in my tour of our living room makeover. So I did that about a year ago and I've got three of them and they've been sitting there all that time and they annoy me every time I look at them because all I can see is the ways that I could have done it better. I already figured out a few key things that you have to do to make them look good when I made them the first time. But in the year since I made them, I, I just keep thinking about it and it's annoying me. So I'm like, I need to try this again with these added ideas that I have. So first things first, I need to explain what I did. This is one of the ones that I made. I think it looks really good. Like it does look good, but it's just, I believe it could look better. The process that I used, you can see from the back, this is probably the best one I made. Maybe I'll show you the other one. Was pro I think this was the first one I did, this one. So I've made it like a little blob. You can see under here how I did it. So I used foil. And that's because it's lightweight and I could sort of mold it in the blob shape I wanted. And then I think I might've, yeah, I originally did a bit of a toilet paper sort of paper mache thing on it to like smooth it. I ended up using the wall render stuff and it worked well. I think I could do it better now. There's a few problems. It's fallen a few times and it's quite like, like there's a whole bit coming off there because it's not that sturdy and you can sort of see the tissue paper. So like what I did wrong was I didn't put enough effort into making a really thick, smooth, solid coat around the edge of this. So that's why there's flimsy bits because it was thinner because I didn't put enough effort into it basically. But also you can see here, what I did was I, I put the render on and then I sanded it, but like I got a bit lazy. It made it so hard to put down the mirror tiles on bits that were like uneven like that. That was a fail. I definitely needed to put more effort into making it smooth. So I've got ideas about how to improve, but firstly, the things that I think I did really well, I used five mil mirror tiles. These were the smallest ones I could get. And while I knew that if I got bigger ones, it would be easier and quicker to do, the smaller ones look better, I think. And they also allow for to go along uneven shapes. And the whole point of this is that it's all one uneven shape. So that's one thing I, I did well, although I think I'm going to try with the 10 mil tiles this time, maybe once, just to compare it, just to see if I really am right on that. There's, there's two other things I think I did really well, and that is creating this like blob shape on the side. So even though say this one is designed to sit on a shelf and like melt down, you don't wanna have a right angle here because if you do, that doesn't look like a melting disco ball. A melting disco ball or a melting anything wouldn't look like that. It would look soft on the edges. So I rounded those edges, even though there was an ability for it to be stable underneath, sitting on a ledge. That is another thing I think I did well. And then the other thing is the start of the disco ball. I looked at them really closely, the original ones, and they seemed to basically, like when you look at this shape, if there wasn't already tiles on it, the easiest thing you could do is just start putting on disco tiles straight across. And you could do that and that would be very easy. And that's also not what it would look like if it melted. So even though it's a little bit harder, that's the whole point. So I started in the middle because that's what the Kelly Wurstler ones did. I essentially put one square tile in the middle and then made the pattern out from there. Now, the way that I did it is I bought pre-made mirror tile sticker sheet. And I basically laid them down in rivets. You want a widening circle. So the way that I did that was I stripped off single rows and then I went through on the back with a box cutter and slit each one, sometimes every second one, it doesn't need to be perfect, but slit in between each of them so that you could sort of stretch and make them a circle when, when it came time to stick them down. That was by far the most tedious part of making these. And since then, I've actually watched a YouTube video about a woman who makes real disco balls by hand 
and she basically does the same thing but she does it with fabric and glues them down she snips them so they're still connected but you can really stretch them out around the shape so those are all the things I think I did well and so obviously my construction underneath is not that good but it was fine but that brings me to the thing that I've been the most annoyed about and like I don't mind that the bottom looks like this because you never look at the bottom and that's fine it kind of tells a story but the thing that really annoys me is that they're not droopy enough from far away they just look like they're sitting there like you can't quite tell that they're really meant to be melted and I want them to look like they are just like dripping down so what I'm going to do is just try and make like one or two more that are really droopy and see if that looks better. It just might add to the vibe of these anyway. So one thing I'm going to do, actually, as I hold this one, this one, because it, I did this all the way to the middle, this one feels so much more sturdy than the other one. So that's interesting. Another thing about the shape of them is it was quite awkward to do this bend in it. This is, I copied this because that is how they were shaped to look really like saggy and slouchy. It's those details of copying those kind of things. Yeah, and, and also where you position this start of the top that makes the difference between a good copy and a bad copy, I believe. So what I'm doing today is I want to make these longer droopier ones because that's what's annoying me is I want it to all look like it's melting off the fireplace. The other thing I keep thinking about that I want to try is instead of using foil as the base shape, I want to try using expanding foam because it's so lightweight and I feel like all I would need to do is spray it and then I could just shave it down to exactly the shape that I want. So I wouldn't have any of this kind of messiness like this. I think I want to try at least two. I want to have one very long vertical melting one and then maybe one bigger one on the floor. So I'm going to give it a go now. Okay, so what I did was a little bit experimental. So I made a few different molds to test my theory. But basically, expanding foam dries with moisture and so it takes moisture from the air. So I decided, well, shouldn't I be able to speed up the drying process if I spray the plastic sheet before I put down the foam and then spray the top of it once I'm done? And the answer from my little experiment is that, yeah, that does work. So it definitely dried quicker and then within I'd say maybe 10 or 20 minutes I was able to mold the half dried expanding foam shape to further bend it down. And the one where I did that the most, I ended up with, I think, the most molded, dripping shape. Because when you first spray the foam, it's almost too liquid to really position in that way. So you need it to be partly set. So I think that that definitely worked and I would recommend that. But the only mistake that I made was I squashed it down a little bit and flattened it. And while that did create the drooping shape that I really wanted, it actually made the entire thing thinner. What I didn't realize at this point was that that was going to make it a lot harder down the line when I was applying the mirror tiles because the thickness wasn't there on the sides. If I were to do it again, I think that I've learned a little bit about expanding foam. And I think the best thing would be to mold it as it dries, just so that you can keep that shape. Okay. So this is my first one. I've practiced my technique a little bit. I'm learning how to use this expanding foam in a way that you can control it a little bit more. So I've chosen to start off with this one that looks very melted. It really bends around and that allows it to sit quite well. There's two real techniques I've refined. There's the expanding foam to make the mold of it. The expanding foam has lots of holes in it. So you need to smooth it over with something. And so I've been working on doing that and it's still not perfect. I don't know if I'm getting impatient with it, but I just want to start putting on disco tiles or am I just pointlessly trying to perfect it? It is, I think, smooth enough, although I do know that it's the edges that is the most important part that can look a bit bad. I'm going to start it now. This one won't take long with these 10 mil tiles. It'll be so much easier than the five mil tiles. I would say that it's definitely easier 
to smooth it down while it's wet. I've been getting a foam brush, dipping it in water and going over it once I've covered it to smooth it down because it's so much easier to do when it's wet than do it when it's dry with a sander because you have so much more control over it that way. But even now, I think that this is really good and sturdy. Like you can still see on the reverse side, but you can see how smooth the surface is. This is the part that was pushed up tightly against the plastic drop sheet. It's a bit crinkly, but you can see the concept of if you perfected this, you could sort of make anything in this a really sturdy thing with a really smooth surface. Now the center of the circle is essentially the start of the entire pattern, so it's really important to get it right. So I practice making the formation before I actually stick them down. And I find usually a sort of hexagon shape works the best. I basically try to join them at their corners, and then the second row I continue the same concept, where you're basically trying to join them at their corners, but flare them out around the circle shape that you're trying to create. It depends on the shape of the disco ball, but I found that I tend to do individual tiles for at least the first like four or five rows, sometimes more but it does get to a point where you can start using the strips and then it starts to happen a lot quicker. So it really is about doing that foundational work to get the starting pattern right with those individual tiles in the center. You really get on a roll when you get to the wider circles and you can just lay down the strips of pre-cut mirror tile. I had a problem halfway through where quite a lot of my tiles were actually falling off and I think it's because there was leftover dust from when I was sanding it that I hadn't removed properly. So I had to go in with some Gorilla Glue to re-stick these down. I needed the Gorilla Glue anyway when I got down to the edges in order to stick them down in these precarious spots. The edges are definitely the hardest part so you need a lot of patience at that point. So here it is, it's done. As you can see from far away, you can see the mirror tiles more in the one with the bigger tiles than in the originals. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think that you can actually understand what it is from far away. I also made this little mini one. It looks like it's falling off. I think that's cool. I think that the main problem with this is up close. It got really, really hard on these edges. Even though it's a good shape, as you can see, it really like folds over the fireplace. If I had used smaller tiles, this one I think would look better because the bigger tiles struggle to go over that surface as much because they're, they're bigger. And so the smaller ones can sort of be more forgiving going around a curve. That's why I would probably say, if you wanna use bigger tiles, you need to make your curves bigger. And I thought that I had really done that. I thought it was okay, but it wasn't. It needs to be plumper than this if you wanna use big tiles. The other little one I made, it was just a practice to get back into it. This is a little thing I had and I just chopped the top off it. And I used the small tiles on this one. And I didn't even put any anything on the surface and it's less sturdy. So it definitely got me back into the swing of things and like the bottom of it looks better and see how it goes on the right angle. And I think it really does all come down to having a good shape. Once you nail the shape, everything else is easier. So I don't wanna let this defeat me yet. So I wanna try the next one. I think I'll try it with the 10 mil tiles again because I'd like to find a way to make that work. Because I do think from far away, the 10 mil looks better. And because of where I'm placing these, I think that if you were designing them yourself, you'd think about where they're going. So if they were going somewhere where people are going to see them fairly close up, then the smaller tile is the way to go. But if it's from further away, which is what the case is here, because it's this fireplace that's, I suppose, probably four meters away when you first look at it, at least four meters away, you just understand what it is. These just look like weird silver things that you don't understand what they are. Whereas this from far away looks like a melted disco ball. I think I need to put more effort into really carving them and making it the blob shape that I want. Because what I've essentially done is I've used this expanding foam and it definitely has a lot of properties that are really good, but I haven't actually intervened with it. I've just gone, here's a blob, I'm working with a blob instead of going, no, I want it to be more rounded here and everything. So I kind of should really be approaching the expanding foam as like a block and then I need to carve the shape I want out of it rather than trying to create the shape. So I think I'm gonna work on really getting a good shape and I might make one more, maybe two more. 
and then I will officially retire from disco balls. I chose this one because I thought it had that long drooping shape that I was trying to achieve and I spent quite some time carving out the back of it so that it could really sit on a shelf in quite a stable way and then also carving along the top to just create the smooth edges that I was trying to achieve so that it would be easier to put the render on. I tried dipping the render into water before smoothing it on and I think that really did help make it easier for me to use the foam brush when trying to smooth it down. Now I tested it out on the back of this chair and I thought the shape was looking okay, but I still needed a little bit more smoothness. So I thought I might as well try something else that I'd been thinking of, which was to try a layer of air dry clay just along the top because I could roll it out and it could be really smooth. And that might be a really easy way to just have this single smooth surface, which might make it easier for the tiles to stick to. In retrospect, I don't really think that this was actually that effective. I thought I was pretty clever because it gave me some flexibility to really soften out the edges and make little changes that I wanted to make. And I also thought that as I was applying the disco tiles, I could always add extra bits of clay here and there to patch it if I had an issue. And that's not what I did. And it didn't really work in that way. And I think what I learned is there really is no shortcut to getting the really smooth surface you need to apply the tiles. So here it is, I'm ready to start, I think. So I can't decide where I want to put the center. I'm thinking about putting it at the top. And then I've also been thinking about putting it maybe on the side, I haven't done that before, but I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is put it in the middle, but stretched out just slightly because it's a very unusual shape. And I'm just thinking about what would it really look like if it were melted. So I was very happy to finally be able to start putting the mirror tiles on because it's actually quite fun. The beginning is a little bit slow, but then it just starts happening really quickly and is so satisfying to look at the progress. But then you get to the point where it starts to touch the edges. And I think I did the edges of this one better than the previous one, but still the 10 mil tiles just can't really get around those sides very well. But I decided I'm fine with it because, you know, you still get the overall look of it. And this one is really designed with those 10 mil tiles to be viewed from far away rather than up close. So as I was trying to assemble these on the fireplace, the large one sits there so well, but unfortunately that longer droopy one just doesn't have the weight distribution to be able to dangle off there, which I did know was going to happen. But I had thought that I would have this motivation to come up with a solution for it. But by the time I was placing it, I just left it on the floor and just thought, I'll think about this another day. But at the same time I was doing this, I was also working on my lemon project. And as I was assembling all of the plants that I bought for that project, the melted disco ball on the floor just kind of became part of the little scenario I'd created there. And I actually kind of love it. I, I think it's really interesting that it's able to be sitting there on the floor interwoven with the other things that are there. And actually what's ended up there looks better than what I wanted in the first place. So I'm actually just happy with it now. I'm definitely a more is more kind of person. And I think that the disco balls have more impact the more of them there are. And it's kind of turned into a bit of an art installation on my fireplace. I have played around with putting them in different locations and I probably will always move them around. I do also think that they look really good outside. So it's very tempting to want to make more, but for now that's where I'm going to leave it. I will link in the description below all of the exact materials that I bought and that I recommend. And make sure you subscribe if you wanna see the other really cool projects that I'll be sharing really soon.